Let's refactor a UI library to get it into shape by setting up its file structure, storybook, and also its unit tests. Let's get right into it. Okay, so a couple weeks ago, I did a huge hour long video where we put together a micro front end setup. And as part of that, we created a UI library that exposed this app shell, which is this header section, as well as the nav bar over here. And it was all set up with React Router 6, and it was super cool. But I gotta say, the way that I put together the UI library was kind of janky and half-hearted. And I've been asked over the years, how would I structure a UI library? So I'm gonna show you how I would do that, and we'll restructure this little UI library, and we'll go and add a storybook, and also unit tests to it. It's really fun, actually. All right, but before I get started, let me just say this is in a mono repo, but it doesn't just apply to mono repos. You can apply this to just a single repo as you please. It just happens to be in a mono repo. All right, so let's start it out. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clone this project over here in MF Router 6, and the link to that is in the description down below. I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go over, over to my terminal and I'm going to git clone it. And now I'm gonna bring it up in VS Code. Okay, so first thing I need to do is do pmpmi, and that's gonna go and install all the packages and get everything all linked up in our mono repo. But before I get there, let's just do a quick overview of what we got. We've got two apps, we got the movies and the playlist app, and we got a whole bunch of packages in here. And the one that we're gonna be playing with is the UI package, which at this point just has uh, a package JSON, a TypeScript configuration, and an index.tsx file that contains uh, just the one piece of UI that we're exporting, which is the app shell, which is that header and then the nav bar along the side. So this isn't that great, I admit. I'm sorry. Okay. Anyway, all right. So we've done our our PM PM I. So let's do a PM PM dev just to make sure that everything actually still works out of the box. And this is gonna bring up all of those libraries, compile all of those libraries, and then compile our two apps. And if everything goes to plan, we should basically just see exactly the same thing here, which we do. Yay. Okay, cool. We can go to our playlist. We can add items to our playlist. There you go, Doctor Strange and Lost City, cool, okay. But we don't really care about any of that. What we're caring about more is this header bar up here, so movies, and then the nav bar over here, and that's all implemented with this app shell. Okay, and we really don't honestly care about what the app shell does either, honestly. We just wanna go and restructure this library to make it more sane. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just move around the files a bit. So I'm going to go over and create a source directory, which kind of makes sense. So I'm going to have UI source. And for each component we are going to expose, we're going to have a directory. So I'm going to call this one app shell, as you'd imagine. And I'm going to go take the index.tsx and drop it into app shell. But I don't really think that's actually the right way to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to app shell.tsx. So the component is just going to have the name of the component within that directory. And then we're going to have an index file in every one of these directories that is just going to export that component. So I'm going to export star from the app shell. And then over in our new index.tsx that we're going to put at the top level, we are going to export star from source app shell. Okay, so what is creating this little directory here given us? Well, it's given us a place where you can put all kinds of cool assets. We can put a storybook file that has all the stories in it. We can put a unit test file that has all the unit tests in it. We can put a CSS file that has the associated CSS modules. And the great thing about that is if we decide to move any of this stuff around later, if we're gonna pick up app shell and move it to another package, basically just pick up that one directory and you pretty much have everything that you would need for that component, theoretically. I mean, if it, of course, depended on other things in the same package, then you'd have to kind of rejigger that a little bit. But, you know, it's still, it's a nice way to kind of contain everything. And this is pretty standard. I've definitely seen this 
in a lot of projects. So, I, you know, it's a little pedantic, I would say, but I think it's fine. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is make sure that, that of course, worked. And it looks like it did. So thumbs up to that. Awesome. Okay, it's cool. So let's get started adding in a storybook. So I'm going to go into packages UI. And within that, I'm going to do PMPX storybook in it. So this is a nice little handy helper function from storybook that goes and sets up our project for us. And if you are not a monorepo fan, you will have another reason to say that you're not a monorepo fan coming up here in a second, as it doesn't quite like being inside of a monorepo. It's going to give us a warning about workspaces and actually, unfortunately, not work. But it's going to get us pretty close. It's going to go and set up some stuff, which is great. Yep, and there you have it. So it blew up on this workspace thing. But what it did do is it actually created this dot storybook inside of here, which has our storybook configuration in it, which is great. It also created a stories directory down here, which has some example stories built into it. What it didn't do is update the package JSON with all of the dependencies. So we need to go and manually add those. So let's go and do that one by one. OK, the first one I'm going to bring in is storybook react in development mode. And that's just the basic storybook mechanism customized to react. So storybook slash react and the dash D is for development mode so that we don't bring it in in production mode, which makes sense. Next thing we need to bring in is react Dom. And the reason that we're bringing in that is that Webpack server depends on it, as does storybook. And we don't have it. We didn't have it normally as part of this package because it's a UI library package. So we're bringing it in in development mode in this case. Next, I'm going to bring in the storybook testing library, also in development mode. All of this is in development mode. And then I'm going to bring in a set of storybook add-ons, including links, essentials, and interactions. And this would all have been done normally by that storybook in it. It's just because we're in this mod repo. So don't hate on storybook. It's fine. It's, you know, it's my, my thing about having it in a mod repo. Okay. So we've got our dependencies. So the next thing we need to do is go over to package JSON and create a script where we can launch it. So I'm going to do, so I'm going to do storybook and I will say start storybook. And I'm just going to give it no port number. Let's see what happens. So I'll do PMPM PM storybook. Okay. It looks pretty good. And this is basically all of the out of the box storybook stuff. So we've got, all of these buttons in here, we've got a header, yada, yada. This is their kind of demonstration of all the things that you can do with Storybook, which is great, but we don't need any of it. So we're going to get rid of it. Dun, dun, dun. We're going to delete all of those files. And what we're going to do instead is create an app shell. Dot stories dot TSX in the same directory as the app shell. So this is going to be our story for the app shell. And why is that going to work? Well, if we go over here to, I think, main, it basically tells us where it's going to source all of those stories, all of the, have all the add-ons and the framework, but anything that says dot stories, dot JSX, TSX, and MDX, which we'll get to in a bit, is going to be included as one of the stories. So that's why you can have that app shell dot stories dot TSX and it'll work. Okay, so I'm going to import some stuff. I'm going to import React. I'm going to bring in component story and comp component meta from Storybook React, as well as the app shell from the current directory. So the next thing we need to do is define the component for Storybook, and that's going to use that component meta. So we're going to say that the title here is app shell and that the component is that app shell. And then we need to define a template. So this template is what it's going to use to render the app shell in the di with the different stories. So it's going to have a component story with the type of app shell, bring in some arguments, and then it's going to give all of those arguments to the app shell. But we're also going to go and give it some required stuff. For example, the routes and the nav links, which are required for this particular component. And then finally, we're going to go and export any stories we want. So in this case, we're going to export the primary story. And that all we need to do is just bind the template to that and give it some default arguments. So in this case, my app would be the title that we want. So let's hit save here and see what we get over in our storybook. All right. So now I've got app shell over here and you hit primary and ah, check that out. I, it's even got 
some togglers for light and dark mode. Click on those. And we really didn't have to do any of that, right? So that, how cool is that? That is really nice. One thing is a little bit irksome is that there's a little bit of padding in here and that would be normally be fine. But I think when you're showing off like a, a container like this, what you really want is you want to just you know take up the entire frame. So let's go and get that going. So to make that change, I would go over into my configuration for storybook in preview.js, which has our parameters. And I'm just going to set the layout to full screen. So I say save and let's see. Yep. There you go. Now it's gotten rid of that padding. And now our canvas stories take up the full frame. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go and bring in jest and that's going to give us the ability to unit test our components. And then we're going to add another component and show you how to do stories slightly differently and test that one. So we're basically going to do this all over again, just to give you some sense of confidence as to how to do this. But before we do that, let me just go and add to the repository, our current state. So I'm going to say that we've added storybook and that will give us a nice fallback if things mess up. And of course, in the meantime, if you're liking this video, hit that like button. If you're really liking the video, hit that subscribe button. Okay. So let us bring in everything we need for Jest. So we're going to bring in Jest as well as TS Jest, which makes it easy to do TypeScript based tests as well as types Jest. So that gives us all the types for things like it and describes and all that, as well as the testing library for react. That's going to give us a nice way to be able to kind of look at the components once they're rendered and render them. And then also the Jest environment for the JS Dom, which you need when you're going to do Dom based testing, which is what we're going to do here because we're doing react components. We're doing like node stuff that's already built in, I think. And you just have the Jest test environment of node. And now we're going to set up the TypeScript configuration by doing a MPX with TS Jest and say that we want to initialize the configuration. This is just a handy little helper that sets up the Jest config file over here and sets up the preset with the TS Jest. But we also want to go and change that to JS DOM because we're doing UI testing. Okay, so next thing we need to do is over in here in package JSON, we create like a test. So we'll say that we want a test and to implement our test, we will call Jest. Test with Jest, yay. All right, so let's go make our first test. So we'll go here, create a new file, call it appshell.spec.tsx. And into there, I'm gonna bring in render from the testing library for React and also our handy entity app shell. And now we're going to describe, say app shell, I guess, that's fine. And we need to give it a function and we'll say it renders. Okay, cool. So now we're going to render an app shell, but I'm not going to use a snapshot test for this. I'm not a huge fan of snapshot tests and we need to add some parameters here for our app shell. So I'm just going to set the nav links to an empty array. I'm going to set the routes to, eh, we'll give it a route in here. So we'll say that we want a home route. And then we want the element to say something like div hello. Cool. And finally we need a title and that should be something like foo. So the output of this is actually really cool. So we pick container here, but you don't have to do that. So I'm going to go and take a look at all of the stuff that comes out of here. We can do all kinds of fine buys and the one that I want is query all text all by text. So I'm going to expect that if we query all by text foo, it will be, yeah, it'll have a length of one that actually that's, that's fine. That's cool. Uh, but I'm going to start off with foo bar here and we're going to try it out. All right, now let's give it a try with our PM PM test. All right, it looks like we have one failure. Let's go take a look and we can see that we expected to have a length of one. What we got back was a length of zero. And where did we get that? Well, we looked for foobar and we expected to have one and we got zero. So let's take a look. So you're looking for foobar when in fact the title is foo. So let's change that to foo instead of foobar and let's run it. And there we go. It passed. 
So we can also look for this hello over here because the slash path is going to be the one that is rendered by default. So let's check for that as well. So let's see. And we'll do something different here. We'll say to be truthy. All right. Now let's run it. And the test still passes. Awesome. Cool. All right, so let's do this one more time. We'll go and create another component. So I'll show you how to get started and go all the way through it. So I'm going to go in and close this out and we will create a component called a product card. So I will go and create a new folder here called product card inside of source. And then we'll start off with the implementation of the product card itself. So I'll do product card dot TSX. And into that, I'm going to bring some Mantine stuff. I'll bring in card, title, button, text group, and paper, and that'll help us make our product card. And then I'll bring in React so that we can specify it as a React functional component. And we'll do that down here. We'll say product card is a React functional component. Awesome. And it's going to take a title and a description. And it's going to return... So our product card is surrounded in a paper. It's got a little bit of shadow and radius on it. And inside of that is our card that has a title section. It has a description and then a button that says buy this. So now let's get it out of our library. And that starts with putting an index file in there. And that index file is going to export everything from the product card. And then we'll go and add it to our index.tsx. And so what shall we do first? I think we should go take a look and see how it looks. So let's do product card dot stories dot MDX. I'm going to use the markup syntax for our stories this time. This is really cool. This actually came out just recently with Storybook, and it's a really fun way to be able to specify stories using an extended markdown syntax. So what does that look like? So up at the top, we're going to import some stuff from the storybook. Meta, story, and canvas like we had before. We're going to get our product card from our local index. And we're going to say what this story is. So we're going to give it meta where the title is product card. So it's going to show up in our storybook is product card. And the components can be a product card. And then we got to do that template thing like we did before. So we're going to export templates. So, so far, it kind of looks like, like TSX, actually. But now we can start adding also some markdown syntax. So I can add in, for example, hash product card. Like, hey, it's the product card stories. And we'll say, let's define a story for our product card component. And we'll just do that. So we'll say we got a story. The name of the story is basic. And now just like we had before with args over here in like app shell stories, we do that this way. But in MDX, we can just make it part of this story tag. And then we just bind that template in there. So let's take a look. Let's try it out. So once again, PMPM PM storybook. All right. Wow. That's a pretty decent looking product card, but even cooler. So currently I'm on this canvas tab. If I click over here to docs, this is when we really see that MDX. So we see the product card stories, which is this line up here. Let's define our story, which is this line down here. And then we got that story in there. In fact, wouldn't it be cool if I had one of these that said like code on it so I could actually see the code? Turns out that is super easy, barely even an issue. So we can just do, for example, we can drop it in here with a canvas. And now when you wrap this story in the canvas, we get this awesome show code down here. And now we can actually show the code. How cool is that? Storybook is just freaking amazing, honestly. So the next thing to do is to add a test. So let's add that product card dot spec dot TSX. And let's just bring in our spec from the other one. So I'm going to go and copy this and paste it into our spec. And it is not a app shell as a product card. So I'll go and change that. And let's see. So what are our inputs? Our inputs are title and description. So let's say that our title is Pokemon Go and our description is Pokemon Go game. And let's just look for that Pokemon Go. So let's see Pokemon Go to have a length of one. Let's give it a try. So now we'll do PMPM PM test and run our tests. 
So now we've got two different tests, one for product card and one for app shell. And both are passing. But let's, you know, Pokemon stop here. I should have gone and done a failing test before I did a running test. So there we go. Let's look for Pokemon stop. And yep, it fails because there's no Pokemon stop. So change to Pokemon go again. And it should work. Yeah. Cool. All right. So here we go. We've got a really nicely factored UI library. Okay, so let me clean up a little bit here and I will check all that stuff into GitHub and get it over to you, of course, in the link down below. But let's just talk about a little bit about what we've done here. So we have created a source directory as opposed to having just everything at the top level. And then within our source directory, we have one folder for each one of our components. So that would be our app shell and our product card. And then we have all the assets for each one of those components in that directory. We've got, for example, with the app shell, we've got the component itself. We've got the storybook stories that explain what the component is and show it off. We have our tests. If we had some CSS, it would also be in here. And then we've got the index, which goes and exports that so that it can be then exported by the index of the whole project itself. Okay, cool. And I would say if you have a really complex component here, if app shell, for example, were to break out like a header and a nav bar as different components, I would just personally have all of those in that same directory kind of as a group, unless I was going to independently expose those. So at this top level, you should only have components, in my opinion, that are the components that are exposed publicly by the library. If there are subcomponents for each one of these, then those would just be additional entries, you know, at the top of that or somewhere in that directory. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you got some ideas for how to structure your UI library. Of course, you can do it any way you want. Look at all these awesome tools like Storybook and Jest that you have at your fingertips. It's really great stuff. Of course, in the meantime, I would love to hear from you and how you do it in the comments section down below. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.